Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a da ba Hey everybody, Michael here. You might have seen in last week's video where I mentioned hypermeter, and that wasn't a concept that Molly had heard of before. It's a relatively new concept in music theory, at least compared to most terms you might learn in a typical music theory course. And I didn't even have a full grasp on it until I had to teach it for a few of my classes when I was a professor. So in last week's video, I said that I didn't have time to go into it, but I did end up giving a quick crash course to Molly. I'll share that with you too as a quick overview on the concept, and then I'll go over it in a little greater detail. No matter what the meter of a piece of music is, the hypermeter is almost always in four. It's related to phrase length, but phrase length can be two or eight with a hypermeter of four. So hyper suggests bigger than meter, yeah. and it's meter-like but with measures instead of beats. So each measure is a beat in a hypermeter, and typically almost oh, okay. all, almost, I, I know what you mean when you all, say measure is a beat. Yeah, almost all Western music uses hypermeters of four most commonly, and you can count measures by four before it gets to like the next idea or it repeats an idea. It's really common in this Pixies album that there are hypermeasures of three. It feels a little disjointed and mm. like it's not finished, sort of like the feeling you get with a song that's in five or in seven. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit less perceptible. All right, let's dive in a bit more. First off, a hypermeasure is not the same thing as a phrase. A phrase is a segment of music that feels like it belongs together. It conveys motion. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It is most often four or eight measures in length and it ends with a cadence. So where hypermeter differs is that hypermeter doesn't necessarily have to have a beginning or an end, and it does not need to end with a cadence. So what is a cadence? This is sort of the more specific part here. Cadences come about from a combination of harmonic, melodic, and rhythmic factors. So it must feel like a completion of a melody or a section of a melody. Often there's a reduction in musical activity at the cadence, and usually a cadence is at least four measures away from another cadence. The two types of cadence that this branch of music theory concerns itself most with are authentic cadences and half cadences. There are other types, but we're really only gonna focus on these. So an authentic cadence is when we've got a dominant chord or a, the five chord leading to a one chord or the tonic chord. And remember, it needs to be the completion of a melody too. It can't just be in the middle of something that keeps going. It has to feel like there's a little bit of a break there. There's often a rest. Then a half cadence is when any chord goes to five and stops on five. Usually not five, seven, usually not a dominant seventh chord, but it stops on the dominant chord. One of my favorite ways to discuss hypermeter is to give you a piece that you probably know and that in which you can hear the hypermeter. So let's do that. So this is a common piece of music that we should all know, but just to make sure that we have it in our ears, let's listen to it real quick. If you have ever conducted before, you should know that the basic conducting pattern for a piece in 2-4, as this is, is 1-2-1-2. One, two, one, two. Let's conduct along with this piece now. It's too fast. Instead, what someone would usually do when they're conducting this piece is something a little bit more relaxed, maybe like this. Now, if you know anything about conducting, you know that I just conducted in four. And actually, every gesture I was giving was an entire measure. This is a good example of how hypermeter works. Hypermeter is present in most things that are measured, that are written on bars with measures, but it doesn't necessarily appear like this. This is just a piece that really makes it sort of obvious. And if you look, when I'm conducting in four, three, four, one, two, three, four. Each of those beats in a measure of four, four gets a different amount of stress. 
So the downbeat one gets the most stress when we're looking at a piece that's in 4-4. And then three gets the second most amount of stress. Two and four are both weaker. The same applies to hypermeasure. If we listen again and do this all one more time, pay attention to how my ones, I'll, I'll actually count along with it, my ones and threes feel like they're more forceful in the music itself. Now, this would be more pronounced if this were a live orchestra playing this piece. This is just a finale realization, so it's not giving it the full oomph that a real orchestra would. They would put more feeling and interpretation into this. But let's do this one more time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. There's a little bit of a pause at the end that makes up for that last four that we're missing. So now that we sort of talked about how in general the hypermeter works, let's get some more specific terms going on here. So hypermeter is meter that operates above the level of the notated meter. So hyper meter. Sometimes it's actually perceived as it is in the Beethoven, sometimes it's not. In pieces that have a hypermeter of four, which is standard, most pieces have a hypermeter of four in this style of music and in most styles of music that we as American listeners, if you're not, you may have different experiences, but most pieces in any style of music that American listeners know typically have a hypermeter of four. So that means that there are four measures that make up one entire hypermeasure. The first of those measures is called the hypermetric downbeat or the hyper downbeat, which sounds like a Pokemon move. The second, third, and fourth are other hypermetric beats or other hyperbeats. As I'm about to show you, not all hypermeter is in quadruple, but most of it is. Phrases typically begin at or slightly before the hyper downbeats. So phrases do tend to line up with hypermeter, but the hypermeter doesn't need to have a cadence at the end of it like a phrase does. And typically, phrases can be much longer than a hypermeter, depending on the tempo of the piece. When music material is repeated, it retains the original hypermetric identity as much as possible. So in other words, if we have music that happens once and then happens again, if it happens the first time on a downbeat, on a, on a hyper downbeat, it will happen the second time on a hyper downbeat as well, typically. So back here to this, we typically show the hypermeter just by putting numbers somewhere you know, in the middle or toward the bottom of a piece of music. So for this, let's put them in the viola, between the viola and cello parts. This is our hypermetric downbeat or our hyper downbeat. There is the second hyper beat in this hyper measure. There's our third hyper beat and fourth hyper beat. Then we get to our second hyper measure with the hyper downbeat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So this time we're going to listen and count in your head with the hyperbeats. Feel how one and three have a little bit more weight to them. You'll also notice that most of the things that happen, most of the, you know, like important big changes in this sentence happen on hyperbeats one and three. So if we use that same system for this Pixie song that I talked about in the last video, Is She Weird? We can sort of quickly go through and count some things. There's a four bar intro, which suggests just one, two, three, four, like that. So it's setting us up to be a fairly typical hypermeter. But then let's put a one where this idea comes back each time. Actually, I'm going to make it a little easier on myself and put it down here. But we're looking for this B flat A. So here's one. Here's one. 
So now let's put in one, two, three, four, the rest of the way through. One, two, three, but now it's back at one. This hypermeasure is only three. Let's look at the next one. One, two, three, and we're back at one again. So this repetition is telling us that a new hypermeasure is starting, but each one is only three bars long. Let's look at the next one. One, two, three. There's no melody here, but the bass line is repeating. So again, this is another one, two, three. Now, I did, I did want to pause a little bit here and say that I'm not positive that this song is in four. If it's in two, please someone correct me, but I hear it in four. That won't change our hypermeter though. It's still going to be a non-four number. So we've got these three bar hypermeasures happening. This one is a four. It's like we've got a little extra measure of weight before we can get to the refrain or the chorus, which definitely starts here. You always want to put the one on the downbeat of a phrase or a section. This is a definite phrase beginning here on Is She Weird? So let's count again. Is she weird? Is she white? Is she promised to the night? And her head has no room. Is she weird? We're repeating. So we start with one again. Is she white? Is she promised to the night? And her head has no room. And that continues. So this song has a hypermeter of three most of the time, which is atypical. There's another song that I really love that does something else interesting with the hypermeter. This one has a two measure intro. So we're gonna do something a little bit extra and just list this as two bars that are not connected to anything else. But where the melody starts, that's a definite one. One, two, three, four. We get a repeat and it comes back on a one after a four. So that's standard. One, two, three, four. Okay, good. Now we've got new material. So let's start that with one, two. This is an exact repeat of the first four bars of melody. So we've got one, two, three, four. So what do we do with these two bars here? Is that just a lone two bar hypermeasure? Or do we connect it to the four before? Or do we connect it to the four after? I am actually not sure how I want to analyze this, but I think there are lots of different ways you could do it. So I suggest you give this song, Washing Machine Heart by Mitski, a listen and see what you think it sounds like. See if you can feel these counting to four of measures and see what you think the answer to any of this is. I want to come in with a little caveat here. When I'm pointing these things out that don't fit into the clean little four bar hypermeasures, I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm actually saying that it's good. It's doing something really interesting. It sort of keeps you on your toes a little bit, like I talked about with Molly in the last video. So let me know if you know of any hypermeasures that are not in four bar measures. I think this is a really fascinating topic and uh, fun things with meter and rhythm always perk my ears up when I'm listening to music. So with that, that's about all I have to say about this. Thank you for indulging me and letting me play Professor again, something that I really do miss. And uh, I hope you got something out of it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you could follow along because some of the things that I'm saying require a little bit more theory to get to this point, but I'm sure at least some of you know what I'm talking about. So that's it. I'm gonna head out now. Maintain your groovy selves. See you next time.